Here it is, the famous triangle inequality taught in, well, it has to be every intro real analysis class. This inequality will become absolutely invaluable to us when we're doing proofs with the absolute value function, specifically the epsilon proofs. And it might not seem like much, but here it is, the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y, and this is for any x and y in the real numbers. There are probably many different versions of this and many different proofs for this. I'm just gonna show you my proof. Now, we're gonna take two little facts. If you saw the last video on just the absolute value function, there are two things to keep in mind here, that the absolute value of x squared is the same thing as x squared, right? If I'm squaring the absolute value, it doesn't really do anything. And also that x has to be less than or equal to its absolute value. So we're gonna keep, keep these two little points in mind, and then we're just gonna do this proof. So take any two elements in the real numbers. Let's let x, let's let x and y be in R. And then I'm just gonna work with the left side and try to get the right side. The trick here with this proof is to square. That's the trick here. So I'm gonna take the left side squared, and using this first bullet point, we know this should be just be the same thing as x plus y, parentheses squared. And the absolute value isn't gonna do anything if we're already squaring. And let's just distribute this. Think back to how would you FOIL this, or how would you just do this multiplication? We would get x plus y times x plus y, right? Or you could probably even just skip this step and skip right to x squared plus y squared plus two times x times y. Okay, why am I doing this? Well, now I'm gonna use my second bullet point here. This is going to be less than or equal to, well, I'm not gonna change these. Maybe I will in a second, but the absolute value here will bound x and y. So the x is less than or equal to its absolute value, and the y is also less than or equal to its absolute value. And maybe now I'll just go ahead and do this first bullet point a second time. Let's just replace the absolute value of x squared with that x squared and replace the absolute value of y squared with that y squared. So I've just I've just rewritten this here. Why did I do this? Well, this, you could factor it. In fact, you could like undistribute it and just write this as the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y squared. Isn't that right? Think about just doing the dis distribution like we did before and you would get this expression, wouldn't we? Why have I done this? Well, just look at the first and last line, I've got absolute value of x plus y squared stuff less than or equal to absolute value of x plus absolute value of y all squared. In other words, you can just take away the middle stuff, just remove that and just say the absolute value of x plus y squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y squared and hey, if these are both squared, we'll just take the square root of both sides or just remove the squared and, and then we exactly have it. We have the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y for any x and y in the real numbers. I hope you enjoyed this proof. Now you can go ahead and click the video on the screen to watch the next video in the real analysis course. You can click the other button to subscribe so you never miss a video in the future.